On my right, Prime Minister Valdis Dombrovskis is with us. We're very grateful for the Prime Minister, in addition to his normal duties, to find time to join what I guess is a rather unusual debate from what I've heard is on Latvian television at the moment. Um, Einar's, I'm going to have fun here, Einar Selinskis from the parties All for Latvia. Welcome to you too. On my left, at the end there, there is an empty seat. Um, that was for the Slessers Reform Party, who didn't reply to any message or email, so take that as you wish. We have Boris Selerevitz from the Harmony Party, Petra Becker, representing Greens and Farmers. I think it's fair to say, for Petra, this is your sort of first time standing for the Saima? give you an easy time. And last but by no means least, former President Valdis Zatlas of the Zatlas Reform Party. <laughs> so we have about 60 minutes of questions, cross-examination and debate, put by you, our audience. The format, if you're unfamiliar with the BBC question time, is very simple. You ask the question, the panellists, in turn, will be asked to respond. As they give their responses, I may interject and ask the audience for further feedback and comment. And that is how we will contribute for the next hour or so. When I do I invite you to make comments, just put your hand up, and Bernard will go with the microphone, and we will take comments as they come. So now, our first question comes from Agnesa Karkina. So the question is, if the economic situation is Latvia, in Latvia is to improve and foreign investments is to grow, what does the panel consider are the best ways to enable this happen, bearing in mind the strengths of the grey economy? If the economic situation in Latvia is to improve and foreign investment is to grow, what does the panel consider are the best ways to enable this to happen, bearing in mind the strength of the grey economy? I'll start with Valdis Atlas. You see, the investors also always uh, ask for three questions. You know? How low the taxes are on labor force? The second is uh, how business friendly is the bureaucracy? And the third one, how flexible is the professional education? And uh, if you add the, the great economy to this point, then we see, and our party has a plan that by reducing the labor taxes step by step uh, and uh, forcing the gray economy to shrink is one of the most important tasks for the next coming years. So you have to, to really have a gentleman agreement with the business community that if we reduce the labor taxes step by step, at least in six months, for one or two percent points, and the, the tax revenues are not falling, we go to the next step. So, and we think this is one of the most important uh, instruments, how to really fight the grey economy. And of course, additionally, you have to, to, to look at the World Bank's doing business ratings. Latvia is 24th, Estonia 17th. You see, that's a big difference even in two neighboring countries. And I think we have to go point by point by, 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 by really creating a business-friendly environment. And just one example, you know, uh, if you really do nothing, you go down. If you change and improve your laws, you go up or at least stand at the same rate. 
And the third is really the most important thing is, is, is uh, professional education. Last year there was a very good example in the pharmaceutical industry ordered about 60 uh, technicians for this industry and all 60 persons after the course, they set up the course standards, they got the jobs. So, but I think the government can be can done more can be can be can be, can do more to really reach all these goals. That's right. Yes, certainly. And so, uh, I would say, basically, I would say many of the same things as Mr. Zatlas has said because there are no radical new solutions, and we all know the problems. So, um, if I would have to state what are the main problems, how to improve the economic situation and how to improve the foreign investments. First, it would be certainly the same thing, the taxes. Definitely, you have to somehow taxes down, because uh, that would be a positive encouragement uh, for the businessmen, uh, and that would be a way to diminish the, the grey economy. And, but to do that, it's not only um, it's on, not only a technical question, it's a question of attitude, of what the people in Latvia, what kind of attitudes business people, all, all kinds of other people have. You probably also know what kind of attitude they have uh, towards this, the state and uh, also the government and the Saima, at least the previous Saima, the 10th Saima. So, uh, uh, you have to make people feel that it is a duty uh, to pay the taxes and they have to have a certain motivation which also goes to the to the further questions a little bit in because how to get the people back who are working abroad uh, is also to make their motivation uh, to come here and uh, make them conditions they can make new businesses because they have lots of experience there they have better languages and so on so uh, you have to somehow make some conditions for them that they would uh, come back. And about the investments, uh, first of all, uh, we all know, and also Sean mentioned, mass media in Latvia, the way the discussions are made, and the negativity that is all, all the time in the mass media, the local mass media, there's always negativity about Latvia. So you have to somehow solve this problem. Uh, for the investors to come here, because the uh, PR of Latvia is, is, is not good. And um, then, of course, education, which was already mentioned, and I'm sure everybody here will mention education and will stress the importance of professional education and will stress the importance how to build up the skills and talents of students. And uh, for the investors, it's very important that the uh, working force here, it's, it's a professional working force and also for the working force it's important they can say well we are actually good enough, we also know how in practice that is already <laughs> in school we had that and if it's, a, it's a, a carpenter for instance he goes to the carpentry and sees how things are done and already you know uh, takes the theoretical and the practical knowledge in mind. So. Um, I think to answer this question or to find a solution, it is a complex uh, solution actually, to, uh, it's a complex answer to solve this and to improve the foreign investment which we really need here because uh, the last figures and also the, the fact that Latvia is everywhere in this, uh, you know, low place, yeah, you don't don't even comparing to Estonia, it's, it's, uh, Estonia is up, but Latvia is still low, maybe Estonia even is low. So uh, how to solve this? I think it's all the complex and education is, again, the key to everything. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. You've touched on education, we've got that coming up later on. Boris, when you answer this question, I'd like you to also to start introducing the concept of how do we combat the, what we call the great economy? Motivation is one thing, but that doesn't mean to say we're going to, you know, not defer our taxes. We've got to, we've got to address that part of the question. Okay. Yeah, good evening. 
of course, we have to combine punitive measures with encouragement so that to create in the end of the day a situation when it's easier and more convenient to pay taxes rather than to evade them. Uh, I am in a difficult position because as a representative of the opposition, of course, I should heavily criticize the government, the most of the, the leader of the government is here. I, I should better refrain from doing this and I leave <coughs> this answer why this has not been done so far, an answer. On a positive uh, day, uh, I, I would stress four things. First, stability. Whoever leads the government, he or she must undertake a strong commitment not to raise taxes and to reduce them as soon as possible. Second, uh, we should reduce administrative burden. Without repeating what has been said already, I believe that this EU targets about reduction of administrative burden is not sufficient. We should set more ambitious goals. Third, we should think about restructuring taxes so that to create more comfortable and more advantageous conditions for new enterprises, for investors, and particularly to single out certain areas where this is of particular importance. And without touching education, the last point about uh, the human resources. So yes, we should try to stop out migration, but we should also think about regular immigration of labor force, because if indeed economy is going to develop, so labor force is not sufficient, we cannot manage without regular uh, uh, immigration. So far we were very much afraid of any kind of immigration, and I believe this becomes a serious hindrance for the development of our economy, particularly of industry. Thank you. I'm going to just stop and ask the audience for any initial comments. The opponents there with the microphone. If anyone wants to make some initial comments, now is the time. Don't be afraid. Okay, we can move on. Uh, I'll ask Linus. Linus, to continue. Yes, thank you. Um, we also can agree to many things that Mr. Zadler mentioned already. Uh, however, there are some additional things. I think uh, uh, actually it's a complex uh, process and uh, it is not only taxes but it is some um, kind of general confidence to the state. And um, then it is a legal situation and starting from the very top, uh, if, uh, uh, which was the reason why this uh, sign was dissolved, and uh, continuing, which is very important, uh, <laughs> the uh, legal situation in the courts of the time uh, of the court decisions and availability of courts, it is actually a very essential thing for uh, investments to come. And um, if we speak, like for example, uh, I can take an example of uh, Latvian free boards, which are uh, chaired by political boards and. Um, there is a lack of transparency, uh, while uh, in some other Baltic countries it is uh, made on more business friendly or more business um, like, like commercial entities. And uh, for example, it is one thing that we can, uh, can propose to change um, uh, the governance, and uh, that might be essential in, in uh, some, some other areas as well. Uh, then uh, one more thing, I think it is more uh, direct uh, uh, support for uh, foreign investments like uh, the central um, institution which is um, investment and development agency um, must uh, uh, be a bit more active on uh, attracting direct foreign investments and uh, one more thing we should do is uh, uh, to avoid to, to bit uh, decrease uh, administrative procedures uh, for example like, like a necessary procedure uh, environment impact assessment which will of course uh, be and, and the environment must be respected however if uh, this procedure is longer and uh, takes more administrative burdens than in our neighboring countries, then of course it is not a situation that attracts uh, investment. So, uh, to summarize, it is a legal situation, a uh, tax situation, and confidence in the state. Thank you. I ask the Prime Minister now to uh, give his response, bearing in mind he has been a finance minister, 
uh, has written, and uh, this is not a plug for his book, an excellent book if you want to speak at night, but it was a good book. I read it over the weekend <laughs> to get briefed on the financial situation. But just to pick up on what Inez was saying, I'm writing thinking the Council of Ministers recently looked at reducing the amount of red tape, for, especially for small and medium sized entrepreneurs. So this may be a step in the right direction. Uh, okay, so to answer the question, uh, what uh, uh, what is being done and what can be done uh, in order to uh, improve economic situation, in, in order to attract uh, more investment, uh, uh, I would start uh, to uh, give some uh, general comments on where we stand uh, economically. So we uh, see that economic growth in the first half of this year was 4.6%. And which is important that uh, not only we return to uh, substantial economic growth after uh, economic crisis, but uh, also uh, we are changing the structure of economy to one which is uh, more uh, sustainable, with much more emphasis on industrial production and exports. With uh, industrial production growth uh, last year being 13%, in seven months of this year, 11% uh, with export growth last year being 30% in the first half of this year, 37%. Uh, so uh, really we can say that uh, industrial production and exports are uh, branches uh, of uh, uh, industry or of economy which are bringing country out of the uh, crisis. So we, what we propose to do is basically to uh, continue to work in uh, this direction to promote industrial production, to promote uh, export-oriented uh, uh, growth with the support of EU funds which are available to us uh, with programs like high value added programs, uh, products program, uh, new products program. Uh, like ex extending uh, a use of export credit guarantee system which we introduced in uh, mid-2009 when really it was a huge financial problem for many Latvian uh, exporters uh, launching uh, what uh, we propose uh, industrial uh, infrastructure problem to deal, uh, deal with different kind of infrastructural shortcomings uh, which we uh, often are uh, addressed by uh, our industrial producers and uh, potential uh, investors uh, to deliver a coordinated approach from state, local government and infrastructure uh, companies vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, potential investors, uh, something we are doing through uh, Investment Coordination Council which was uh, launched uh, last uh, August, August uh, before one year and uh, uh, also uh, do some more practical steps in order to encourage uh, investment. As regards uh, tax policy, clearly we need uh, predictable tax policy, so our suggestion is to introduce three years uh, moratorium for tax raises and then subject to the budgetary possibilities uh, move to uh, tax uh, cuts. And also, uh, which is quite important, to uh, go for a uh, professional and higher educational reforms in order to link uh, professional education output uh, with demands of the labor market. And uh, again, there is some experiences from Germany, from um, uh, other countries, uh, which we can learn uh, how uh, it could be done. As regards uh, cutting red tape, it's permanently on uh, government's agenda. We work together with Foreign Investors Council uh, in Latvia in order to identify uh, different procedures which can be simplified and streamlined. We introduced last year again uh, what is called micro enterprises support package, really, with uh, making single tax for micro enterprises possibility to start an enterprise from one lot, uh, simplified uh, bookkeeping and reporting procedures. So, uh, really, I think this is quite a good, good uh, package for uh, some people which uh, think of, uh, instead of seeking jobs, just starting their own uh, small business. As regards uh, fighting the shadow economy, so we passed the uh, shadow economy combating uh, plan uh, last uh, August. Uh, by now we have implemented uh, maybe 30-something uh, out of uh, 61 uh, measure in this uh, shadow economy combating plan and quite a few uh, measures are due as of January 1st uh, next year, including so-called zero declarations, which is more or less uh, universal income declaration, 
uh, including uh, uh, working on black and white lists of companies for uh, state revenue service in order to uh, concentrate different kind of controls in those companies which have had problems with uh, tax avoidance, uh, including uh, one-off measure with, uh, so to say, uh, savings amnesty while paying 15% uh, tax and a range of other measures uh, as regards uh, combating uh, shadow economy. So we feel this uh, general uh, direction uh, which we started while overcoming the crisis with uh, financial and economic uh, stabilization has been uh, quite uh, successful and now from there we can build to ensure uh, stable and uh, sustainable growth. Thank you. Um, I throw it over to the audience. Anyone wish to comment on what they've just heard or ask any further questions on this area of, of debate, the economy? Hi, uh, I'm Martin Bostock. I've been involved in and out of Latvia for some 15 years or so. Um, I, 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 I think there are a lot of good things I would like to say, so despite the fact that one or two of these things in response to, to, to what you have said may sound highly critical, uh, that's not to say I don't think there are a lot of very good things like the quality of the people, like their drive when they have the opportunity, their honesty when they're in personal situations and so on. So it isn't all bad news, but one of the things I would like to, to ask is whether any of you have plans to deal with the two-faced attitude of many of the public servants in the country who I think sandbag many of the measures that you put out. I've been involved in the regions of the country, in the fringes, where I know what the law is supposed to be, but I can't persuade the officers of the State Revenue Service who occupied my management time, messing me about time after time after time and denying that the laws have been changed. The difficulty is, many fine things are said. I'm very pleased to hear you say that. I believe you mean it. The difficulty is in implementation. And in many of the organizations, the bureaucracies I have had dealings with, they believe they are running the ship and they make sure that those changes and reforms do not happen. I'd like to hear very quickly, if it's possible, Chairman, um, what your views on are, how you can reform the, the levers of government. Okay, thank you for that, Martin. Before I bring this back to the panel, because I'm sure all of us here have something to say on the tax revenue service, they're not the friendly bunch, are they? Um, <laughs> anyone else with comments that I can put to the panel together? Anyone else? Okay, Prime Minister, as you, as you summed it up, you can reply to Martin first. Uh, well, uh, certainly uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a, a substantial problem as regards Im implementation and ensuring uh, uniform implementation of law uh, laws and regulations uh, from uh, state revenue service and uh, also some uh, other uh, institutions. So that certainly is a uh, problem. So, uh, of course, it is then worth looking at the specific cases to identify and actually to go after those specific cases to ensure that uh, law is being implemented as needed and also to make sure that those officials somewhere in the regions feel that they are being uh, supervised. Uh, otherwise, we can, uh, of course, discuss many theories, uh, how to streamline decision-making, but really you, you then need to go after specific uh, cases, use them as a case studies, and actually from there then uh, prepare state revenue service recommendations for local officials on implementation of that specific law or that specific, uh, specific regulation. I'm going to pass this back to Petra to uh, um, continue with the answer because I'm actually interested in what you're thinking as a small party with various business interests attracted to your party and also the fact that, you know, your party's been in government as well. And with this question of the two-faced attitude of civil servants, I'll, ask, I'll also say to you, what about their effective training? Because it's no good passing all these laws if no one tells them what they are and how to implement them. Thank you, Sean. Um, 
Actually, my answer will, will be um, consisting of two parts. One is um, my party, and uh, from the point of view of our ministers and ministries, and the other part of my answer will be um, from me personally, because I haven't been a minister and I haven't been an MP, so I can only judge from my own experience, and I have experience working in the Ministry of Defense and in the Ministry of Education and Science. So I can then say what I personally also believe should be done. So first of all, um, I think it actually asks for really structural reforms, all this bureaucracy, because also our ministers have uh, felt that there are strong hindrances from the bureaucrats because um, I think this problem goes as far as to the Soviet time and many of the bureaucrats here still have them, some kind of Soviet time attitude and all this and it cannot be reformed in a day, it cannot be changed in a day and these people have worked there for most of their lives and uh, it's understandable this attitude and also the training, there's been a lot of training probably, Mr. Prime Minister knows it and uh, everybody knows here about the special school and all the courses to the civil servants and uh, all the conferences and everything and all the experience sharing they have done and gone abroad and so on. But the bureaucrats have formed strong and exclusive groups in the ministries and we know of course some ministries have more of this some less and I think this problem should be really tackled if we want to make some changes and if we can want to put positive changes into life because also our ministers haven't been able to do many of the good changes and uh, and just simply continue with the good changes and ideas that they have had so, uh, of course, there's also things that have been done, but um, I really believe that uh, if the question goes to, how was the question put, it, it should, what should be done, or it's just simply, or, or simply just, it is like that, and so what is your main point? by saying this, because you, you probably, you know, you know this situation from, from the side as you are as a foreigner have lived here for a long uh, time. Yes, I, I, I think many, many of us have experienced these kind, many of us have experienced these kinds of things and what I wanted to know really was, are you aware of it and do you have any intention or program or party's policies specifically to address these issues? I mean, for instance, um, I can't find and have never been able to find any kind of truly independent linkage, an ombudsman if you like, to take things through to the decision making level and time after time you find that the level of appeal is actually the immediate boss of the person who caused the problem and they back their staff. Okay, thank you. I think this is really true that you have felt it and of course uh, local people know this and uh, it's either a common, ordinary man who goes to the mid or a businessman. They have all had these, these kinds of problems and really, seriously, nothing has been done or it has been very difficult to do something with this problem. And I think that it really is to make the structural reforms and first of all, to do it, we have to be strong, all the parties that will form the next government, we have to be strong on our national goals. What exactly are they? We have international goals, we have EU goals, we have all that, but what are the national goals? What are the national interests? We have to really state that really strong, you know, and then you can have all the reforms, all the changes, you know, in... in, 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 in uh, okay, I, I think I already uh, attached my personal side of, of, of this question because uh, uh, I have a feeling that really very many young people have um, gone to ministries and they have tried to make their careers and maybe the start has been promising but afterwards they have again uh, come up to these problems that there are these strong and exclusive groups uh, which which the old bureaucrats have formed and they cannot actually make their careers there they cannot put their knowledge put their good education into use there they feel maybe even useless or they cannot actually uh, make a career and or somebody would say well we'll sit there and wait 10 years or something well who of the young people would do that <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, Boris is sitting next to you. As a member of the opposition, um, 
where, where do you stand on this? This idea that the civil servants may not be responding to the new measures the government wish to implement. Not just the previous one, but will happen for the next one. Yes. Um, I have some good news for you, because you face serious problems, but local businessmen face much more serious problems. So attitude <laughs> towards them is much worse than towards Maybe you. Local businessmen are here tonight. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, and uh, uh, I, I'm sure this is not a matter of professional level, and this is a matter of attitude. So people uh, feel uh, no responsibility. So they know that uh, no, they will not be punished for misinterpreting the law. And this personal responsibility should be introduced. And indeed, Latvia is a small country. And we have huge problems with human resources. And I know many very well-educated, diligent, professional people who just apply for positions in the European Commission and somewhere else where salaries are uncomparable. So the, the problem is how to, to, to preserve our uh, limited human resources. Uh, in recent years, uh, the, the, the income of uh, civil servants was huge, did not help. Now it has been cut quite seriously. It also doesn't help. So, so my, my, my idea is we should introduce personal responsibility, we should expand competition, we should implement uh, very uh, target-oriented uh, personal selection policies, uh, we should think about some PR measures, and what my colleague said, it's, it's indeed, it's very true, we have certain clans, certain groups, which have a sort of defense around them and do not allow young, talented, and diligent people to make their careers. So, and finally, uh, one more problem, it's a it's weakness of the court system. Because normally, if a civil ser servant abuses the law, misinterprets it, uh, uh, it so uh, you could go to court, and court quickly takes the right decision, and he or she is punished. In our system, it's not uh, possible, unfortunately, because courts are very slow, extremely slow. So we should streamline the work of court, because otherwise judiciary is a universal arbitrator, and I don't think that the kind of uh, ombudsman, or s uh, it will not help. We need much stronger and much quicker courts. Thank you. Well, thank you. Before I ask uh, Mr. Sattlers, I'm going to ask Ines uh, to comment, and that's all of the previous politicians at the side. Thank you very much. Um, I think um, uh, I can agree only on the things uh, about the court, uh, which I mentioned already in my uh, first comment. Uh, regarding the civil servants, uh, of course we need two things. We need um, some or clear goals for them, uh, <coughs> control but also some kind of motivation system. <coughs> if there is complete lack of motivation system, uh, then, then the system in, uh, may work for, for, for a few years, but it uh, will not work for a long time. And uh, the administrative procedures uh, that I already mentioned, uh, but actually the main thing I will say is that uh, uh, if we will have the possibility, we will face the problem. Mr. Sartlers. You see, I don't think we, we should blame only the, the, the civil servants. Uh, because uh, we should make the number of procedures to shrink. Less procedures. The, the decision should be made in a, in a shorter time. It will not give any more too much room for corruption. That's the first thing. And make the rules and, and, and laws as simple as possible, because the complexity sometimes, uh, which is, which is uh, really created by trying to address each situation, makes it lousy. If any law or regulation is lousy, you have a lousy administration. But uh, the second point I would like to really emphasize is, when you train your, your staff in your private company, the first principle you teach them that the customer is always right, because it helps a lot. But when you when you and when you come to the the, the civil service, you never see that, uh, because because then it's just the opposite. The bureaucrat is always right, 
<laughs> and that is not helping the situation. So uh, I really don't understand why we don't have any quality management systems in public institutions with the feedback from the customers. Because the, all the, the public government is, is created to serve the citizens, to serve the business people, to serve anybody who needs the help from the state. So you need the feedback and you need to correct any, any, any law or regulation which creates complexity. Let's make it simple. Only if it's quick. Um, I, I wanted to say something in response to what Mr. Zadler said about the uh, cutting down the, the the civil servants, the the number of civil servants, or cutting down the procedures. The procedures. Okay. Okay. Also about the procedures. Um, the procedures. Well, we are a country a member of the. EU, so we have certain bureaucracy here, which we will have to do, and we'll have to deal with it. And uh, so then it's also a question about the then uh, these ones that we dismiss from there, then the one will do the job of two or three previous people, previous civil servants. So then uh, it's again a question how much you will overload these people, and will that make real changes in the system? Is that the solution? So, okay, thank you. But I, I have to be honest, as chairman, I think you missed the point on that. Mr. Zatlas was, to some of the responses you've just heard, Mr. Zatlas is actually saying reduce procedure, not reduce civil servants. That could be a painful operation. You can reduce procedures quite easily just by training people how to be more efficient. It's very, very simple. It happens in lots of countries, and you've also said just now about the EU bringing bureaucracy. It may well be the case, but we have to find ways of bringing the good and the bad. Boris has also pointed out to us uh, the, the matter of attitude. We've also heard that the judicial service here in Latvia is far too slow, and you know your court of appeal, as it were, could be the boss of the person you're complaining against. And we've also are aware that red tape reduction of red tape, as uh, Prime Minister Dombrovskis has said, has you know, been tackled in many ways. So there are starts being there. Um, quality management is needed. That's something for you to feed back on at a later stage. I now need to move on to the second question of the evening, which is going to come from uh, Maya Kadlakova. But before she asks the question, I'm going to lead in with something that I got off the newswire today. Forty young people were opposite the cabinet of ministers in a protest against youth emigration. Now, youth emigration ties in beautifully to this question we're going to get on uh, unemployment, and we'll be able to take education as part of this question as well. Uh, Maria, Maya, sorry. Thank you. Youth unemployment, that's a big challenge in Latvia, right? And what are you going to do to provide more jobs? Thank you. Youth unemployment is a big challenge in Latvia today. What will you do to provide more jobs? Heinz. Thank you. I think uh, it was already mentioned in our discussion about the necessity to change the educational system and uh, especially the professional educational system should be changed according to uh, the necessity of, of jobs, according to availability of, of uh, pro uh, professions. But uh, actually, in, in more general, the educational system, uh, starting from the schools, uh, should be uh, changed to more um, not only learning the facts, but uh, to more like development of, of a personality, of availability to um, attract new knowledges. But then uh, regarding the, uh, the jobs, and, and one possible area is um, rapidly developing in, in some other countries, uh, the green growth and green economy, which means 
uh, energy efficiency, uh, renewable uh, energy, but uh, uh, in the wider sense, um, a lot of uh, areas around it, uh, the um, smart grid, uh, and uh, uh, our program tells not only about just to uh, bring hair and, or, or uh, technology from abroad and, and uh, install here, uh, but uh, we should uh, also start producing equipment <coughs> or, or parts of it or IT for uh, this green economy and uh, to, to not only use it here but also for export markets. And uh, the green economy is, uh, uh, um, can be a short-term solution, let's say, um, ratification of, of buildings, uh, where there is a huge possibility in, of uh, jobs in the building sector, but uh, in uh, mid-term and the further perspective, uh, they are more uh, long-standing and uh, um, jobs which need uh, higher qualification which I already mentioned regarding the equipment, uh, IT and, and other things. Uh, I think that, that is uh, uh, one good area. Of course, it is not the only one, and uh, uh, we need to attract investors also in, in other areas, but I think it can be one good possibility. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, as regards uh, unemployment, certainly <coughs> it's uh, one of the most uh, uh, significant uh, social problems we are now uh, facing. So, uh, basically, what we are doing, uh, trying to address uh, it in uh, two ways. One is uh, immediate uh, social solutions uh, to deal with people which do not have a job now, which uh, we created so-called social safety network uh, in fall 2009. Uh, especially when the uh, economic crisis uh, was the deepest, with programs like uh, temporary works in local governments, with programs like uh, uh, unemployed uh, training, with uh, extension of certain uh, social benefits. But it's quite clear that we cannot address uh, this uh, problem uh, only as a social problem. So this uh, social safety network certainly is good during the crisis, now we are gradually reducing it and actually uh, uh, encouraging people uh, again to go more back to job because the signals we are receiving from entrepreneurs are also that uh, 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 this uh, temporary works program and some other programs are distorting the uh, labor market. As regards uh, creation of uh, new jobs, uh, certainly it's first and foremost linked to its uh, economic uh, development. And this, uh, as I said in my introductory uh, statement, we see as one of the uh, key issues to ensure uh, sustainable economic growth, to promote industrial production, to promote export-oriented industries, because we believe that exactly those industries will be the ones which bring uh, uh, most jobs. Plus, we created this uh, micro-enterprises uh, uh, support package uh, in order to encourage also uh, some uh, uh, people to start their own businesses instead of uh, seeking the job. If you look at the employment figures, uh, of course you can look in two ways. So on, one, uh, on one hand, unemployment uh, has come down from 17.3% uh, in March uh, 2010, when it was a peak to 11.8% now. Uh, but uh, one could say uh, maybe it's also because people stop searching for a job or say uh, uh, well, benefits expires. But then again, if you look at the employment, we see that since then uh, some 100,000 new jobs have been uh, created. We are still in our employment level below uh, pre-crisis level, so certainly there is uh, more to be done. But we see that we are on the right uh, path and we uh, believe that uh, its uh, creation of jobs will achieve mainly through uh, uh, support of uh, industry and uh, uh, through economic uh, growth. And uh, of course something I also mentioned on this education system. It's very important to link our professional education system and also higher education system with labor market demand to make sure that we do not produce young uh, unemployed, but really we produce uh, those uh, skills which are needed in labor market. And for this, uh, 
We are now uh, undergoing reform of professional education systems involving uh, uh, entrepreneurs, business organizations in determining uh, the supply of professional schools and uh, determining uh, specific programs up to the level where they also determine what kind of equipment should be purchased from uh, professional schools in order to train uh, right kind of uh, specialists. So uh, we believe that all those uh, three uh, uh, directions together, the social safety network, uh, uh, economic growth uh, and uh, uh, professional uh, education reform uh, will uh, go a long uh, way towards reducing unemployment. So we aim uh, within uh, three years to reduce unemployment below seven uh, percent, uh, making it lowest in the borders. I just want to ask you one question, Prime Minister. You quote the figures of 17.3% in March 2010 and 11.8% now. But at one point, Latvia had the highest unemployment rate in the EU and in the Resigne region it was more than 17.3%. And the 11.8% you're quoting now, a 5.5% drop, isn't part of that also due to the fact that many people aren't in the country, so therefore are getting jobs elsewhere, and they've come off the unemployment register, and they're on possibly the employment or unemployment register of another country? Uh, well, uh, as regards uh, figures I mentioned, figures are uh, 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 figures of registered unemployment by state uh, uh, employment agency. So those are the figures I had been uh, quoting you. So you can check on the figures. I'm pretty confident those are uh, right. Uh, as regards uh, this, another factor of why unemployment is decreasing. Uh, you are right. That's exactly why I mentioned. There can be also different factors. So you not only need to look at the unemployment rate, but you also need to look at the uh, employment or uh, number of uh, jobs. And as I mentioned, since the uh, deepest point, also around 100,000 new jobs or employment have increased by around 100,000. So really, uh, we see uh, that uh, also employment is going up. Mr. Zettlers, would you like to reply to that? Unemployment is going down. Employment is going up. Uh, Nobody knows exactly what is going on. So we have, we have to believe the figures because the figures are always figures are always based on the same measurements. And that's important. So we really compare the figures of the previous year or to this year, the previous month or this month. But uh, I think uh, uh, a young unemployed person here in Latvia is a problem just after graduating the, the school or, or, or professional school or even university. And uh, usually they have knowledge, but they don't have experience. But uh, if you listen to the, to the claims of the em em employers, they say they, they have lack of knowledge, and that it means inadequate knowledge, uh, and uh, inadequate, of course, skills and experience uh, uh, to the demand of, of, of that in the company. So what he had to do, uh, that first we had to really improve what the Prime Minister said, that, that the standards of, of, of uh, professional education. And uh, these standards should be set up by the industries, not by the Ministry of Education and Science. That's the difference. Because then uh, there is a, a much, much closer link to the demand, and not just uh, what, what, what the educators you know, uh, think it's the right thing to do. Uh, but who is going to t teach them the skills? And who is going to give them the experience? And there's only one answer, the employer. And how to really motivate the employer to do that? Because usually it's much easier to take uh, some experienced worker instead of a, a young man just at the university or school. So we, we need to really introduce that social tax holidays for one year for those who take uh, uh, these, these people uh, and give them jobs. And that's the price for teaching the skills and give them, giving them the first experience. To bring them the, the, in the labor circle, to, to, be, to become a worker and an employer, an employee. 
this is this is a difference which we have to really uh, tackle in, in the next coming year. We should not wait too long. Yes, um, again, uh, I will answer in two parts. Mm, this is a very good question, and the first part, of course, the youngsters and unemployment is a very, very uh, big topic. And the second is the people who are over 40 uh, years old, what to do with them, because uh, employers don't want to employ them. So, uh, first of all, the youngsters. Mm, I wanted to touch upon what Mr. Zelinsky said about the, the green energy. That's, that's beautiful and we also encourage that, the, to make the solar panels and the wind generators and everything in that uh, green sector, but that will not, of course, bring immediate results. That will bring, bring only results in the long term and that we all know, no, uh, being populistic about that. So, um, first of all, uh, again, it will be education, which is the most important thing, so that it would be linked in all ways to the market and so that the uh, businessmen and the employers have their say in the education more and more that they have they, they can have their say in that because I've heard that from many businessmen saying that really they also stumble across this problem with the bureaucrats again with the old bureaucrats they don't want to really take that in, in their minds and take bear that in their minds and, and do something what the businessmen say so um, uh, and another thing is um, initiative uh, young people are usually quite ambitious people, especially in this country, since we've had the, the changes from another regime, and, and that's understandable and very good. But they would also probably want to make their own companies and, and, and so on. Maybe they wouldn't want to be employed, they would be, want to be employers. So um, we can take an experience from England, for instance. Um, one, uh, 1.5 years, if you, if you have a company, then 1.5 years, you don't, you don't need to pay the taxes. You have some tax reductions, you have really some conditions from the part of the state that you can have your company and you don't need to bother about the taxes once you start it. Because to start is difficult. You know, to, to bring yourself together and to start it is difficult. So it, these people should be encouraged in all ways, not just only making micro-enterprises, but also in real ways, making them really good conditions for, for so that their businesses would be successful and they would have enough time to, to, to have attract clients to what they offer. And uh, another thing, of course, which is a big problem is the, uh, Mr. Prime Minister touched upon this, is manufacturing and production and industrial manufacturing. Of course, we all know that in reality there is, there is too little production and manufacturing in Latvia because most of the production has been closed down. Uh, most of the factories has been closed down. Okay, maybe it's good to the nature, you know, but still it's a big problem. We need the production. And we know we have similar problems, but it's a common problem across Europe, and it's not really an issue we can tackle now. But I'm sorry to put you down. I'm going to have to ask Boris to um, conclude this uh, answer session. Uh, thank you. No, frankly speaking, I feel a bit uh, comfortable with the way how the question is formulated. Why young people? If uh, some, the solution, the proposed solution is to re redistribute scarce resources in favor of young people, I say no. Because in my view, elderly people, people pre-retirement age are in a much uh, worse situation. Because, uh, and uh, young people are more successful in lobbying. 40 people demonstrated today in front of the cabinet of ministers, old uh, people do not do this. Although 80% of retired people receive old age pensions below subsistence minimum. So, uh, of course, it doesn't mean that we should neglect this issue. But we should be balanced in this approach. And without repeating what has been told already, I, I agree with many of these proposals in respect of education. Two things I would like to, to, to say. As to education, we are strongly against abolition of state-funded university education. If this is done, people will go to other EU countries where this higher education is free of charge. 
So another thing, along with the loans and with, with all these investments by, by private businesses, what Mr. Zadler mentioned, uh, we, we, we should introduce contracts with the state. The state pays for education and the graduate, after graduation, undertakes to work for three, five years in, in a hospital that has been just introduced in the countryside school or something like this. So this is a sort of contract. And second point is innovation. Uh, in my view, this problem is very much related to the fact that we are very weak in innovations. This is exactly a bottleneck in using EU funds in other respects. So young people are very creative. In my previous life, I am a computer scientist, and I still keep in touch with many of my students. Unfortunately, most of them work outside of Latvia, in Silicon Valley, in Israel, some in Russia. But those who stay in Latvia, some of them are really very creative very inventive and, and already the second generation or the students of my students established new enterprises they do not rely on the state they do not organize demonstrations in front of the cabinet of ministers they just work and they unfortunately they realize very clearly that the state will not help them uh, the main task uh, what we should do is uh, not not to hinder their efforts and i believe that young people can take care of themselves thank you, thank you.